StoryMap.js is an application that is created by NightLab, which is an organization that creates multiple different types of visualization apps. They also create another one called Timeline.js that is pretty common. And this particular program allows you to create slides that can be tied to locations on a map. So it gives you kind of this tour idea type of feeling while you are navigating a project. The program itself is pretty easy to use. It doesn't require a extra account to be created. You can tie it to any email for the most part and especially Google accounts if you have a Google account. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on story map and I can see the available projects that I already have. I can start a new project. I have never really seen a limit to how many projects you can have in here and they seem to not expire for the most part if um, you created a project quite a while ago. I have this one that I created in 2019. It looks like it is still hanging out. So it doesn't really seem to be an expiration date. The thing about this is that they're kind of in the program. Um, so you can't really pass ownership to a different account or anything like that. They're kind of hosted in the Night Lab program. So that's just something to think about. If I want to start a new project, I can click on new. And I'm just going to call this Northfield, Minnesota project and create. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give you this cover page and it always gives you this default map. The name of your project can go in this headline box right here. So I'm going to just add Northfield, Minnesota. And if you have any media, you can put a media picture in here. It does need to be from your local computer. So if you have an image, just make sure to share it to your computer before you add it to the project. So I'm actually going to add a quick image. Depending on the type of image, it will just kind of fit it the best that it can. There isn't a whole lot of ways to kind of edit it. You can put credits in there. Um, if you know the source or the citation of the image, and we can even click on the preview button to kind of see what it looks like right now. So this is kind of what our project currently looks like. We don't really have any points or anything or any slides, so it's just a blank, blank space. I'm going to go back to my edit menu. And to add our first point, I'm going to click on add slide. And we have a search bar right here. It can do addresses. Sometimes you can get pretty lucky with landmarks or you can type in uh, latitude, longitude, coordinates. If you're not really sure where to get those, sometimes you can do a quick Google search or you can go to Google Maps and click on the map and I'll give you the, the latitude, longitude. So I'm just going to add in Northfield, Minnesota, and it's able to find it here on the first search result. So this is kind of what our map looks like right now. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. A little bit more. So there's kind of the Northfield area right there. If it ever is a little bit off, you can kind of, you might be able to tell if it's not in the right location. You can click on the point and drag it somewhere else. So if it's close but not quite close enough, you can change where it is located. So I'm gonna say that this is Northfield, Minnesota. And maybe I'll just add a quick image here as well. I'm gonna add some credit information. And if you want to add any details at this point, you can add them into this box. I'm going to shift it down here a little bit. This is downtown Northfield, Minnesota. So here's kind of what our first slide looks like. If we click on, if we go back to our cover slide, now we actually can see a point on the map. So if we click on preview, we can start seeing those points. 
So I'm going to return back to my edit menu and I'm going to add a second slide. I'm going to add one for St. Olaf College. And sometimes it can actually find it in the search bar. Sometimes it can't. So you might have to pick maybe a really close location or just pull the address for the building. Or you can pick a city and just kind of move the point. Whatever is the easiest to do. It's going to locate uh, St. Olaf Avenue right here. So I'm going to drag the point over and zoom in just a little bit. Now you'll notice that this map is black and white. It's really kind of boring. There's It's kind of hard to see some of the features on here. So to switch the map, I'm going to click on options. And in this map type right here, I'm actually going to pick open street maps and then close. So this will actually give us a really nice view of where we are and this will apply it to all of the slides. There really isn't a way to apply a separate base map to each slide so it does uh, show on the whole project. This is kind of what our cover slide looks like now. And so here I'm going to put St. Olaf College Northfield and I'm going to add another picture. So we have, now we have a map of St. Olaf College. And I'm just going to add a couple of details. Website Olaf EDU, St. Olaf College, Northfield, Minnesota. So here's our second slide. We can click on preview again to kind of what it looks like. So what if we want to add some type of YouTube video or some type of embedded material into this site? So what we'll need to do is pull the embed code for that media. I'm going to switch to YouTube and I'm going to pull a video. So I'm going to use this drone aerial footage of Northfield that I want to add to our story maps project. And to do that, I'm just going to click on share and I'm going to look for this embed code. So we actually want this entire code. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to just paste it right into this little caption box down here. Now I'm going to show you in a second, there is actually kind of a catch about using embedded media in the program. If we switch to preview, the media here will follow the same size as your image. So let's say, for example, if your image is about half the size, then your video is going to be about half the size. The program uses the width of the images to kind of generate the width of the video. So even if you go back into the embed code and try to adjust this height and this width, usually it will not change the height or the width of the YouTube video or any other embedded media that you're adding to the project. So that's just something to think about. One thing I tell people to do occasionally is that if the image is just not big enough, add some frames or add add something to the sides and then re-add it to the project and that will give you more space to see the video. Um, there's some other workarounds that you can do for that as well, but that just seems to be the easiest. So now that we've got our two slides here, we'll go back to our cover slide. This is kind of what it looks like. And if we go to preview, now we'll see that our cover has changed. So this is the actual view that your reader will see. And if you click on this little black arrow right here, it'll start to generate this tour view and kind of pull us across the, the project. So if you would like to see what a finished project kind of looks like, This is a project that is showing some historical houses in the Twin Cities area. If I click on preview right here, we can kind of see what this looks like. And you'll notice that my base map looks a little bit different. That is because this is a custom map box base map. So you can actually 
create your own map box maps and add those to the program if you do not like any of the base map options. I created this to kind of give it a little bit of a historic vintage look. And when I click on the arrows here, we can see that you can you can see that there are different markers here on the map. There's some little track lines here to kind of follow where the project is. I've even added a little icon image so we don't have to have just these plain markers, but you don't have to do that. I keep clicking on the images here. Then we got a couple of images and some YouTube videos with some additional information about the location. And we'll just keep going through the map. One thing you can also do is in this one right here, I have added a little uh, form that's embedded into the program. So you could even interact with this form if you wanted to. And then some submit feedback that you could potentially have somebody contact you. So that's kind of an example of what a finished project might look like. And in this program, when you have kind of to a point where you're happy with the project that you've got, just make sure to check that it is saving. Usually it will auto save, but you can also click regular save. And then you have to publish it to kind of make it visible. So I'm going to just click public, publish changes and then share on this top right. This will actually give you the link to share out the project. So once you have that link, you can copy that and just paste that in a new tab to see what your project looks like. And that is a quick demo on how to create a story map JS project.